Hey guys, welcome back to another Weird Wednesday. I'm Ashers and this is Tobias. Tobias, how are you? Good. How are you? Doing fantastic. How was your weekend? Oh boy, it was uh it was great. Um you know, I feel like I, I get asked that all the time, and uh, I, I never have like a, I never have like a sexy answer. You know, it's never like, well, you know, I, uh, I went out to the club, and uh, then I got invited to this after party on a yacht or something. No, it's like literally, uh, we had our our home gaming group over, and we played some uh, Warhammer Fantasy role play. So, oh. for anybody who knows what that is, uh, you can guess that you know that it was a good time. Because I was clearly excited about it, um, but uh, for you know anybody who's not into that kind of stuff, uh, we just did nerd stuff for like five or six hours on Saturday, and uh, boy, that was about it. Watched a bunch of Star Wars on Sunday, and uh, and called it a weekend. What Star Wars? We just talked about Star Wars, but what Star Wars specifically did you watch? Well, we had just watched the first six, right? So we got through episode six as of last weekend. And so we decided to watch the, uh, the sequel trilogy. And, uh, and so we watched episode seven, eight, and nine. And I got to say, I haven't seen them in a while. And I grew up because, you know, we all know I'm old as shit. So I grew up during a time sort of post original trilogy where Star Wars was not that big of a deal anymore, right? So there was this, this, this gap of like 10, 12 years, right? From like the mid eighties into the nineties until they started getting uh, episodes four, five, and six uh, ready for re-release as special editions where like Star Wars was not the cultural sensation that it is today, right? And so it was propped up by all of this crazy bullshit uh, they had uh, novels that 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 would be written and comic books and stuff like that. And that shit would get wild, you know, uh, yeah. like it was just all over the place and it was really cool. But, um, you know, if people want to complain about how like, you know, something about the sequel trilogies doesn't make sense. It's like, well, my guy, you know, you obviously weren't around for most of the extended universe, you know, as cool as it was like a good three quarters of it didn't make any sense. So anyway, like that's, that's all, uh, in the way of expl like, uh, uh, explanation as to why I can watch the, uh, the, uh, sequel trilogy and go, you know what? It's not that bad. You know, uh, uh, the, the emperor coming back as a clone, it's been done, you know, like that, that was the whole dark empire, like comic series, like that, uh, that, that, uh, that comic series from Dark Horse back in the day, like that was the, that was the emperor coming back as a clone. So it's really like, they're just recycling ideas. So if you grew up with that kind of stuff, you know, you watch it and you're like, ah, okay, sure. I'll, I'll buy that. I liked it. Okay. In the nineties when they did it the first time. So this, this is fine. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, I watched them again. I hadn't seen them in a while and, uh, you know, uh, episode seven was fine. Episode eight was actually a lot better than I remember it being. And then, uh, episode nine again is it's a, look, is it an objectively good movie? Of course not. Like there's a lot of behind the scenes shit going on with that where like, it just doesn't end up making a great cohesive film, but, um, you know, it's not the worst movie I've, I've, I've ever seen, you know, it's not, it's not the room, right? Like, <laughs> holy shit. Like it, it gets way worse than that. So overall, like they're not as good as the, uh, the, the OG trilogy, but nothing is, and yeah. nothing's going to be if that's what you grew up with, which of course it is, uh, what, what I grew up with. So, you know, as long as it's fun, I that's, miss that's when, all I care about. I miss when you could like, I miss when a movie could come out, right? And you could get some serious mileage off of it. You know, um, you know, looking at like the gap of time in between when the first three were released compared to the next three, the actual first three is that? 
Um, right. right. Yeah. It's like, okay. Is it, yeah. is it uh, chronological order that they happened or when they were, were released, you know, these <laughs> you are know, important. But, but there was like a huge, a huge gap in between. And, and you're right. You know, a lot of the, um, a lot of the lore that, that was had for that, which of course, again, I'm not, we talked about this. I'm not a huge star Wars fan, but um, I am very aware that there's a whole deep uh, universe in all these books that were released and stuff like that. Well, now it's like, like I said, you're like, oh, we watched a bunch of Star Wars, and I have to ask, you know, what what did you watch? Because now there's so much; it's so oversaturated. <laughs> like there's tons of content out there, um, and it's every you know, it seems like at least twice a year there's a new Star Wars something or the other, right? A new spinoff series. Um, now you've got the main trilogies. Now they're like going off and spinning off the main movies into other trilogies, and you know, stuff oh like yeah. That. It well, Disney's got a hold of it, and Disney yeah. is going to produce the shit out of content for Star Wars until uh, it's either you know in, 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 until it's either the biggest thing in the entire planet or everybody fucking hates it, you know. So there's really no, I don't think there's 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 any end in sight for that. Which you know, by and large, I've been pretty happy with 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 what I've seen so far, you know. Um, there was a time when I was younger than I am now where I would have got in such a huge dipshit nerd rage over any little change or perceived slight or the idea that like a Disney executive just wasn't as big of a fan of Star Wars as me or some bullshit. But uh, I'm just, I'm, I don't care. Like I am too old for that shit now. So like if it's a fun story, and like it at least is like the logic of it is internally consistent. I'm fine. Let's cool. You know, like there's some neat lightsaber fights. Like I can live with that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, that's, that's, you're right. That's an age thing. You know, it just comes with, you, you realize you wake up one day and you're just like, why would I waste my time on this? Um, oh yeah. This <laughs> is why I don't read comments on the internet anymore. Yeah. Smart. Like you couldn't pay me to read fucking like I won't read comments on shit that I have written. Like I just I'm not <laughs> gonna do it. It's it's a it's true. It is an enormous waste of your life and a good way to go to bed mad. Like there's just no reason for it. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it'll, it'll hurt no, feelings you. for sure. Yeah, um, I you know I started to, um, and then also I agree with Nate, our our um, personal men in black over there that's listening. Um, he says Trek is better. Um, man, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta agree with that. I, I like Star Trek a lot too. It's fine. It's true. You can like both. Um, but he oh, also yeah. says uh, the mouse requires content. And again, again, considering he's the men in black, I think he knows that um, for sure. Um, that is verifiable proof. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I also grew up uh, loving Star Trek. I, uh, from the time I was in grade school, when uh, Star Trek VI, uh, The Undiscovered Country, came out, um, that was the first Star Trek movie that I've seen in the that I saw in the theater, and I've seen every single other one uh, in the theater as as soon as it came out. So, um, yes, I am. I'm also a, a, a big fan of Star Trek. I never really got that weird dichotomy like that, that, uh, the, the, the idea that you could either be a fan of Star Wars or Star Trek, but never both for some stupid yeah. reason. When most people I know who like one usually like the other one, you know, I don't, I guess I don't really know anybody who likes, unless Nate just hates Star Wars, in which case I know one person who's really into one and not the other one. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that you have to choose and then throw Lord of the Rings in there too, right? You're not allowed to like it if you like either of those, I guess. I like all three. <laughs> I'm literally reading the Lord of the Rings for like the millionth time in my life right now after watching Star Wars last weekend. So, <laughs> I mean, what does that make me? I've Dude. got like... You're Seven go or eight jail. tabletop role playing game books for the uh, the uh, Modifius 2D20 Star Trek system that I've ran multiple times and love. Like someone's going to call Lord. the police on you. I mean, I'm that's... like some kind of nerd mutant. I shouldn't exist. <laughs> I guess I just like it all. I don't know. <laughs> oh, this is for me. Great. I mean, you know, it's that simple. 
Um, yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I, I've been going on this movies journey myself, and my next uh, themed project was to watch all the A twenty four movies. Right? Yeah. I historically don't like A twenty four movies. <laughs> That's an understatement, um, but sure. <laughs> You know, I just, they're just not for me. And I have tried, right? All all the cool stuff. Everyone's like, oh, you got to watch this one. Check this one out. You know, when I announced that I was going to go down the A24 gambit, um, I had to just, I had to make a, you know, some decisions. What did I consider an A24 film? Um, because they are a production company and a distribution company. It's like Troma. Oh. Just because it's it's distributed by Troma doesn't make it true Troma, right? Right, right. And, uh, you know, just because I, I get to feel like I haven't done it in a while, big trauma fan over here, you know. Oh, yeah. If it trauma. if it's not directed by Lloyd Kaufman, is it really trauma? Right. So, right. So, you know, you have to kind of decide, you know. So I decided it was anything that was produced by A24, something that they actually made, right? Um, mm. That they had a hand in making. And what I found out really quickly is that all these movies that people claim that they love by A24 – are actually a 24 uh, <laughs> uh so you know that was kind of awkward because i'm going through the list and let me tell you it was kind of difficult to curate this list i had to go through every single one of their films and figure it out you know figure out who actually produced it and they have a huge list of movies on their website that aren't theirs um there were some on that list that i've seen that i liked uh tusk is on that list I, I, I enjoyed that movie it's ridiculous yeah uh bodies 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 i actually had a really good time with that one uh that was really fun neither of those though are a24 so i i go down the list and i'm kind of checking them out and i'm like looking at i'm like reading the descriptions of these movies and it is just complete art house trash i mean is it made for somebody i'm sure but sure. none of it's made for me and <laughs> And Who so, thought that Tusk was an A24 movie? That's a Kevin Smith movie. It's listed on their website as one of their films. Oh, that's weak. Okay. Because they distributed it. They're one one of the distributors of the film. Uh -huh. And so, you know, people assume that if it's on that list, that means it's A24. It does not. Um, you know, I think the only like, you know, people are like, you know, they're like, oh, Swiss Army Man, and which always looked interesting to me, right? I'm like, cool, I can't wait to dig into this list. Maybe I'll find stuff I like. And uh, I watched two. I watched two, um, two of these movies, and they were terrible. And I just was like, you know what? I'm not doing this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I posted the list online. I'm like, hey, everybody, this is my list. You know, if you want to check it out, you know, if you guys want to run that gambit, go ahead. I'm not doing it though. Um, right. So like, just just the pure A24 movies. Those are the ones we were like, well, I, this is unwatchable. Right. Yes. Okay. And, you know, the first one was really good, but it just, it suffers, it suffered from the same syndrome that A24 does. It was uh, Moonlight. And it's like a coming of age story about uh, a queer black man. Okay. And, you know, powerful movie, very effective. It had my attention all the way through and then it gets to the end and then it's just fucking trash. And I'm like, dude. <laughs> well, is he like a werewolf or a like a serial killer or something? Like, what's my hook here? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh no! All right. Well, never mind then. Jeez. Neither of those things. Um, just like I said, a coming of age story about a queer black man. That's great. I can't relate to that. I'm neither queer or a man or black. I can relate to he had a drug addict parent. Okay. Um, it wasn't made for me, right? Obviously, uh. and that's fine. Um, but like I said, the ending just falls flat. It just, it just, it just ends. It just ends, and there's no. You don't, there's no anything. You don't feel anything. You have no idea it's going to end. It just does. And it's like, you know, I've always said this about all the A24 movies I watch. It's like the last part, like 20 minutes of the movie, they bring in somebody completely new and go, don't even read the script. This is the concept. Just write whatever you want. We'll, we'll do it. Huh. <laughs> so, I'm still reeling at the idea that like there are A24 movies that aren't horror movies because that's the only thing. Are. None of none of them. Only I believe only three of them were, and it was it comes at night, hereditary, and and midsummer. But like the witch, that's another one. People are like, oh, you gotta watch the witch. It's not a twenty four. It's not an a twenty four movie. And uh, but no, the rest of them. There's like a there's like sports documentaries, and most what? of them are coming of age stories. 
Wow. Get out of here, A24, with that bullshit. <laughs> Horror movies or get the fuck out. Right. <laughs> You know, I at least thought I'd enjoy the fact that I'm watching horror movies. No, it's not even that. They're just like <sighs> terrible. Like the second movie I watched, it's about a husband and wife. They're cheating on each other. They're both planning on leaving one another and have planned this out with their affair partners. And then they end up sleeping together again. And like now they're cheating on their affair partners with the, with each other. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't care about any of this. <laughs> like, yeah, that sounds so boring. I just, ugh. <laughs> Like, I'd rather watch Jerry Springer, right? It's way more entertaining. <laughs> oh, Jerry Springer's a million times more entertaining than that. I'll watch Jerry Springer fucking reruns all day. Yeah, and that ruined it for me. I was like, oh, okay, well, now th that's exactly what annihilated the list. The second movie on the list, I was like, you know what? If this is what all this stuff is, and I'm sure they're all different. Maybe there's one gym in there. Maybe there's a couple. Um, but I'm not going to dig through all that shit to find stuff. So instead, now I'm moving on to Cronenberg. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> Which is a good choice. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's yeah, 100%. Um, so I have to cleanse myself of the trash. and uh, Make sure to watch uh, uh, David Cronenberg in what I think is his only acting role in uh, Nightbreed. Clyde Barker's Nightbreed. Oh, yeah. Nightbreed's a good one. I've seen that. Yeah, he plays the killer doctor in that. I, I don't think he's ever acted in anything else. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but... <laughs> No, I could see Cronenberg only taking on one role ever. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that makes a lot of sense. It's such a um, good role. He's actually really good in it, too. So, yeah. I, I don't know if he's acted in anything else. I'm going to have to look. I, I mean, Google it, I guess, but I I would be surprised. I mean, maybe. Not, he's never acted in anything else I've ever heard of. That's for sure. Yeah, true. I'm gonna, uh, Well, while I'm doing my, my Cronenberg-a-thon, I'll definitely look into it, which is going to have much more enjoyable movies, so... I'm uh, very excited about that. But anyway, somebody come on one of the movie reviews. You're right. Don't read comments. It's just a waste of your time. Some dude. And it's like mansplaining to me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, it's terrible that you, you, you're choosing to only see the bad. And I'm just like, it's not, it's not that. It's just, I don't like the movie. Like I'm allowed to not yeah. like the movie. <laughs> I you, saw that actually, and yeah. I was like, "What the fuck, man!" <laughs> Choosing to just see the bad—that—that's like coming, like walking into my house, squatting in my living room, taking a huge shit, and then telling me, "Like, oh, it's a shame that you're only choosing to smell the bad in this room right now." <laughs> you should be happy that I'm here. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, what the fuck? No, this is just a terrible situation. I don't. <laughs> it's not. Don't gaslight me into. You know, into believing I'm wrong for thinking the shitty movie sucks. Right. I think I know what kind of movies that I like. Um, and I didn't like that one. It, well, and then I don't know what he commented something else and it was so long. And I'm like, I'm not fucking reading this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? <then> I didn't. <laughs> that's the best. That's that's where you need that meme. Like, uh, that's just like, what does it say? It's literally just like, you know, congrats or, you know, I'm sorry that happened. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Because um, I'm not reading all that shit. Absolutely. Right. So that is super annoying. And then it's like people, you know, I started when I started doing the movie reviews, it was just supposed to be fun because it was, it was Christmas. And I just I'd never seen these Christmas movies. And that's what it was. And people like them. People want want more of them. I wouldn't do this. I don't do this because I think I'm some super cool film critic that has all the right opinions about film. Um, you know, I am admitting that I don't know shit about film. I've hardly seen any film ever. Um, <laughs> and that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> and yeah. if I don't like a movie, that should be okay. And it's okay if, if, you know, people that come on, they're like, oh, I love this movie. That's fine. I don't care about that. Don't sure. fucking come at me after you're the one, you know, first of all, I don't friend across anybody on Facebook. So if, if it's on Facebook, your ass is there because you asked to be there. Uh, don't fucking come <laughs> at me and be like, well, you're wrong. <laughs> You know? <laughs> right it's art it's it's subjective like i understand believe me i've got i've got my fucking english degree so i i know or at least i understand that there are objective criteria that people use to critique art and so yes i understand that there is an objective difference between something that is well written uh and something that that is not you know but in terms of enjoying the art, throw all that shit out the fucking window because none of it matters. Right. People are going to like different things. And like, that's okay because 
as a subjective medium, like art is enjoyed differently by different people. And the idea that every single fucking person has to like this one thing because, you know, some elitist dipshit holds it up and it puts it on this pedestal as being this objectively enjoyable fucking experience. Fuck off with that. Like that's such a brain dead fucking take. Like I, I don't even know where to start in terms of how asinine that is. Like really? Nah. It's very insecure is what it is. And when you do that shit to people, all you're saying is that I don't accept myself. And we all see right through the bullshit. So how embarrassing for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just say that next time. Right. <laughs> That's like, um, that would eviscerate somebody. I'd be gutted if somebody <laughs> told me that. You know, I mean, it's just the way it is. Um, but I'm getting my black button hot because let me tell you, if you motherfuckers come on my post and disagree with me about these Cronenberg movies, I'm blocking you because you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> They're all great. Now shut up about it. Right. All of them. 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10. No notes. You keep being you, Cronenberg. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. You know? Um, no, I just, you know, so yeah, anyway, I, again, the jury's still out on A24. Still haven't seen one that I like. If you want to suggest an A24 movie to me that actually is A24 made and you think it's really great, I'll watch it. I'm here for it. Change my mind. Uh, but until that happens, and, and no, I don't like Hereditary or Midsummer. I've seen them both and I don't like them. Sorry. I don't like them. There's better ways to display trauma. <laughs> better movies that do it better. <laughs> uh you know that's that's my take and that's fine if you like them I, I don't care if you like them and i don't like it's it's cool but uh so far no dice no dice so cronenberg it is something that i know i'll, I'll like there you go um because i don't want to just only focus on the bad so uh <laughs> anyway speaking of uh focusing on the bad um <laughs> let's do some uh let's do some news <laughs> nice segue <laughs> that's Thank great you. I am I'm a professional. Um so I I don't I've got one news. Um before I do my one news, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um good housekeeping, that is. Uh if you come here and you listen to the show every week, um go leave it five stars. Leave it a, a nice review. If you're on Apple, go leave it a nice review. Even if you've written a review before, this is not the same show. Uh, there, the, Tobias is here now, and uh, we need to know what you think. So go leave it a fresh new review on Apple and get five stars on Spotify um, because it helps. It helps, and it's free. I'm not asking a lot. Uh, so take a break right now. Go ahead and leave your, your nice review, your nice five stars, whatever it is you got to do. Um, and then after you do that, start making uh, plans to come to Loveland, Ohio on March the 2nd because it's the second annual Frogman Festival. Well, how exciting. I'm going to be there um i'll be there well, all day i'll be there giving a talk on uh frog humanoids from around the world and uh, a bunch of other people are there too you want to you know again support your community um you know i don't i don't know if there's tickets or not there might be um i'll sneak you in the back you know just let me know and <laughs> you just gotta buy a t-shirt off me yeah, uh, just just prop open the back door of the brick like <laughs> nobody gets hurt it's fine you know jeff craig won't mind uh we're good friends so <laughs> be okay um anyway just wanted to throw those things out there um because i think that they're important i need some feedback are you guys still enjoying the show um you know what do you think about about the new host and the the, the new format and you know what's going on with it uh let me know sure so if 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 you dig like whatever i am adding to this show definitely go ahead and give a five star review and if you don't like me take that shit to your grave i don't <laughs> want to hear about it yeah yeah that's very true yeah if, if you don't like him uh, uh, he doesn't read the comments anyway so that's true i i will not know um oh and if we're throwing out events by the by i i do i have some coming up but only one worth mentioning uh, i will be speaking at dead of winter in the one and only haunted mineral springs hotel down in alton illinois that's coming up uh, next weekend, actually. It's going to be February, Saturday, February 10th. So ch definitely check that out. It's put on by the uh, the one and only Troy Taylor. Uh, if you're into the paranormal, I'm sure you already know who that is. So uh, it's a great event. And, you know, it, it, uh, it all goes to support local food pantries. So it's a great cause and a great time. 
Very nice. Hey, that's not that far from me. I might come crash it. Hey, there you go. It's like a little less than six hours. That ain't bad in in Midwestern speak. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right. I'll come sneak in the back door. Um, (laughs) 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 If I can infiltrate a MUFON uh, conference, I think I can I can bust in a dead a winner. Um, No, definitely go go check that out. Go go meet Tobias Wayland himself, and uh, tell him about whatever you know talk to him about whatever just don't tell him your bad takes because he doesn't care um, <laughs> i will not i will i will sit there i'll do that thing where i like plug my ears up and just go la 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 the whole time <laughs> like a toddler <laughs> i think that's a good strategy <laughs> right? um, all right on to the news section i like i said i only have the one news um but i think it's interesting to talk about so on uh, a couple days ago here uh, january 25th in alabama um, something historical happened. Um, they actually executed a man, uh, Kenneth Eugene Smith, who was on death row for um, being the hitman in a you know hire and a murder for hire uh, scheme. Um, killed an old lady, you know, stabbed her a couple times. It sounds really insensitive, but that part doesn't matter. I mean, death row happens all the time. It's it's horrible. Um, they put him to death with a new strategy. Um, so they actually did something called nitrogen hypoxia. Okay. So typically, uh, when someone's on death row and they're executed, um, they do the lethal injection, right? Um, basically human, human euthanasia, and they inject you with these chemicals and you just almost immediately go unconscious and die. Um, they tried to do that with, with Mr. Smith, uh, I think it was a couple of years ago. And they were unable to find a vein. Spent hours and hours and hours trying to locate a vein on this guy. They couldn't get one. Um, A lot of death row inmates will do this. So they will purposefully dehydrate themselves in an attempt to avoid execution. And when you dehydrate yourself, veins are hard to come by. And so sometimes they'll have to stave it off. Now they'll try it again. They'll keep trying until they get you. Um, But the hope is that in that time that they have to reschedule your execution, you will get an appeal. Right. And you'll be able to avoid execution altogether. And sometimes it works. Um, So Mr. Smith had, you know, whether or not he had tried to avoid execution, you know, we don't know for sure, but probably Um, they said, well, you know what? (laughs) We got this new thing that we really want to try out. And uh, basically what they do is they take a mask and it's a full face sealed mask that they put over you and they pump you full of nitrogen. At that point, you can't breathe. You suffocate. Um, Now, scientifically, they said that this is just as humane if not more humane uh to execute inmates this way um it is an instantaneous you become unconscious and then from there you know eventually your body does take a minute to kind of suffocate but but you're not awake during the whole thing and uh it didn't go well (laughs) so it was you know pretty horrific um people are calling into question this experimental thing that they did to this man you know um execution is already a hot topic debate for whether or not it is humane and this just really pushed that envelope now he had tried to appeal on the basis that he was basically going to be a guinea pig for this experiment um and the courts went ahead and went through with it anyway uh whenever they they put the mask on him uh they think that he may have attempted to hold his breath and because he was doing that it kind of drug out the process a little bit i mean i'll I'll spare the gory details but it took him about 20 minutes to die and that's uh was a long time and everybody that witnesses that is really horrific um so i don't know tobias you have thoughts on um execution in general did they not expect him to hold his breath i guess <laughs> you know, i feel I, like that should that should have come as no surprise to anyone i agree really and that's just a natural physical reflex. I mean, yeah, period. you probably don't even have control over it. Yeah. Right. It would be completely instinctual. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm not an advocate for the, uh, the, the death penalty. Um, I think that it, uh, has pretty severe ramifications. Um, because obviously we know that at this point that, that we for sure have put people to death who, who were not guilty of right. the, uh, the crime of which they, they, they were convicted. Um, so that alone, you know, is enough for us to get rid of the fucking death penalty. We already don't need it, but yeah. And then you hear stories like this. I mean, are, 
are there a lot of stories of inmates being peacefully executed? You know, I, I have to imagine that most probably struggle because again, it's, it's gotta be like an, in an animal instinct, right? Like mm-hmm. you don't have any choice. Like we, we strive to, to remain alive under all circumstances, you know, it's, right. it's why you, um, well, there's all kinds of gross examples, you know, it's, it's, it's why people will claw their fingers to the bone when they're buried alive, right? Like sure, we'll do yeah. literally anything. It's why somebody would be capable of cutting off their own foot to, to escape from being stuck right. to, you know, to, to, to escape from, from some trap or something like, so, yeah, I mean, of course it's going to be awful and nasty every single fucking time, right? Like what, how dead inside do you have to be before you start considering the taking of a human life as routine? As right. something yeah. that isn't a huge conflict, as something that that wouldn't result in 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 this fight every single time, you know, like it's just fucked up. But the whole thing's weird and creepy. I'm going to go on record right now. I'm going to take a brave stance. I don't like it. Well, that's a brave. So there, stance. yeah, you heard it here first. I don't, <laughs> I don't like the death penalty. Shit's I, no, fucked I, up. I agree. I I largely agree with you. Um, because and i guess it's because like i don't know man i'm not a murderer you know what i mean like yeah right <laughs> i don't want to kill people um it honestly i mean even just like reading this story i mean the impact of it when i think about when i think about like if that were me you know if i were set to be executed whether or not i was guilty you know if i if i were set to be executed there is no humane way to do that like there isn't right. because you've got this entire build up there's this whole ritual the last meal and then you've got to fucking go to sleep and then like wait until the next day and i, I mean there's no you know your mind's just got to go nuts there's no easy way to be like okay yeah i'm just gonna die now unless for whatever reason you actively want to die and there are some people that you know they decide that or whatever you know sure. but I do think that it is cruel and unusual punishment, um, but I get why people are so for it. I understand because the very first thought you have is, oh, my God, you have this horrible, terrible fucking person and they deserve to die. You know, they're not they're not good people and they won't contribute anything good to the world. Kill them. You know, that's that's sure. the first thing. But they don't really think beyond the fact that, like, it's still a person. I mean, and you're right. That person might not even be guilty, you know. I think that it should be um, largely up to the family, first of all, the the family of the victims, right? Whomever is at play there. Um, there yeah. are some some families that come forward and say, you know what, we don't want that. Um, you know, and then I think that it should be, there, there should be irrefutable evidence completely that this person did it. Um, you know, maybe you have them on video or something. You know, there there are some people that are just really terrible people um and i don't know just me being a nice person i guess i just i still feel badly for people and i probably shouldn't that's probably most of my problem in life but it's i do yeah well i mean i you know when it comes to to the the kinds of people who end up on death row like death row if if they're really guilty yeah i mean fuck those guys you know like i don't i don't have any pity for them but the the reality of the 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 situation i think is is twofold you know on, on the one hand of course Yes, you have that uh, that that thing we already talked about, where somebody could be innocent, and believe me, every single one of these courts that has has convicted somebody and sent them to death said that they had incontrovertible evidence of this person's fucking guilt. You know, so like that's not a good enough standard at this point. But then, two, um, you know, if if you really fucking hate this guy, it's not like prison is super fun. You know, it's not Club Med, right? It's it's not a fucking all inclusive sandals resort. He's not living it up in there. Right. Prison fucking sucks. So, it, you know, if 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 you want a worse punishment than death, because death is a release, like death gets you out of the conditions of prison, like out of the the hell of being confined, because it's unnatural to be confined and just as a species, we don't take to it very well. Then lock him up, keep him in fucking prison for the rest of his life. Like yeah. that's way worse than getting killed. Holy shit. You yeah, know, I, like I that's so much that. worse. 
Yeah. Like I, you have the thought every day, I'm never getting, this is my life. I'm never getting out of here, yeah. you know, and you have to grapple with that all the time. That's why people do kill themselves in prison <laughs> you know? right? Be, because that's the only escape that they have is, is death. Um, so no, I, I agree. Um, you know, and people are like, well, who's going to pay for all these prisoners? Well, we are, we already are. So, <laughs> oh yeah, we, we could afford it if we stopped locking up people for fucking marijuana and shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right no like, problem hell we'd be saving money like good <laughs> yeah, lord i mean you know and not to mention uh execution drugs uh, are um actually way more expensive they cost more to have those drugs than it does to house them for the rest of their life isn't that crazy that's that a fact that's true big um, pharma big pharma yeah just saying i would lock those fucking guys up uh right <laughs> i mean have you seen what they charge for insulin? Fuck those guys. <laughs> oh, I know. Ask me how. Um, <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> um, but yeah, though, that's it just, it, you know, I, I don't think that people should be experimented on either um, for new ways to kill them. You that's know? some Nazi shit. Yeah. It, no, yeah, thank it's you. It's crazy. They didn't test this ever you know and with i'm sure they didn't do any animal testing or anything i'm almost positive i would read that they just were like hey here's a theory that he should become unconscious right away and then he doesn't even know he's dying well we don't know that first of all um second of all uh you just then his whole fucking family had to watch it and it's like are you serious <laughs> i guess they didn't have to right but they're supposed to that's what well they, they had the option to close their eyes no, i mean yeah of course that's insane <laughs> you know the whole thing is uh you know it just it really blew my mind this is the first time since we started doing lethal injection that we've had a new way to kill people and you know frankly um you know, if we're going to do it, if we absolutely have to do it, I, my personal opinion is uh, we should not schedule it. Well, we should schedule it. We shouldn't tell them when it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> and then they just take it out in the prison yard and shoot them. Frankly, I mean, honestly, that I think that that is the most cost effective and the most humane way that you could possibly do that uh, as as uh uh, insensitive as this will sound old yeller style you know just do it just get it done that and was a mercy for old yeller though you it know was, what I mean? it was it was uh it needed to happen for old yeller um but you know it would, depending on if you prefer life in prison or death you know this might be a mercy for them too um you know that's anyway that's my personal opinion if you have to do it uh there's a lot of circumstances i think but that is why death row takes like years and years and years like this man was convicted like 40 years ago or something. Well, that's the other part of it. Like sending, putting somebody to death by the time they're actually put to death, you have spent so much fucking money, like, you know, taxpayer money to get through all of the appeals and everything that, yeah, it would have just been cheaper to just lock them up for the rest of their natural fucking life. Right. And just call it a day. Yeah. And that would have been it. And that's what you should do to a monster. Just lock them up, lock them away. And that way we never kill any innocent people. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's bad enough incarcerating somebody unjustly, you know, at least then you can, if, if, if they're found innocent or there's new evidence, or we find out that like, I don't know, the prosecutor was corrupt or something that, uh, you know, there's a chance at restitution, but like, you can't give somebody their life back. Like, it's just too much of a risk. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. And then eventually, you know. The innocent would, I mean, they could have a chance to salvage something, you know, at that point. Right. Um, with appeals and new evidence and breakthrough technology, things like that. It's happened. <laughs> We're watching it happen. The Innocence in Project is a real thing. Like, yeah. and they do a lot of good work because there are a lot of people. And it's easy for a lot of, of us to, you know, who, who have relatively privileged positions in society to think, oh, well, the system could never fail anybody that hard, but it does fucking constantly. All the time. Yeah, all the time it does, you know, so I don't know. Again, you know, it, we're still doing it right. We're, we're, there's still the death penalty and, and some places throughout the United States, whatever. That part's neither here nor there. Um, so some people have very strong feelings about it, but uh, period. I think most of us can agree that experimenting on these people is, is inhumane. And uh, I don't know if you don't feel that way. I don't know what to tell you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right. Just. I don't know. I guess uh, don't run for office. 
<laughs> generally avoid me if you can. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm not a murderer. I can't sympathize. But then again, I've also never had anybody close to me murdered, right? So I, I can't sympathize with those people, you know? Maybe they have. Maybe people feel like, oh, yeah, kill them, you know, kill them all because maybe they've experienced something like that. And I can't even begin to imagine what that's like, sure. um, you know? But in my case, I just don't think that that, you know, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll pull, well, the, the whole thing about that is, and, uh, and actually, I can get into this more when when we get to our our main topic here in a minute. But the last damn person who's okay, the last damn person you should be looking to for an objective opinion on a crime or a death or anything else is the family of the victim because they're not going to fucking have one. And it's not that their feelings don't matter, but you, you just, you can't, you cannot give in to what they're feeling and accept that as justice because yeah. that's just not how we work. You know, their emotions are valid and they should feel them and process them, but they can't dictate policy. They just fucking cannot. Yeah, that's I agree with that. I agree with that. I do. You know, as much as that. What's, you know, sucks for those people to hear in the time of, of grieving, it still stands. Um, all feelings are valid. It doesn't mean that your reaction to those feelings are justified. Um, so anyway. Yeah. That's what I had this week. Uh, so did you have any news for us? I do. I don't know. I don't know if, uh, if you saw this, but the Department of Defense released this absolutely milk toast statement on the jellyfish ufo video oh yeah i forgot yeah <laughs> so basically like the, the the whole thing is of course like uh, uh ufo researchers and journalists like jeremy corbell and george knapp uh you know they keep pushing on this uh this jellyfish ufo video which i i think is great because it's a weird ass video and, and we all want to get to the bottom of it and uh, so they received this statement from the Department of Defense. It's not very long. I'll just, I'll read it real quick. It says, uh, we do not comment on the, on the authenticity of alleged DOD material that may have been leaked. DOD takes public interest in unidentified anomalous phenomena uh, seriously and is committed to openness and accountability to the American people. This commitment must be balanced with the department's obligation to protect sensitive information, sources, and methods. To that end, Aero will provide updates to the public via its website as it resolves UAP cases, including sharing the analytic approach and method used for each case, as well as imagery, when approved for public release. The Department of Defense takes the potential unauthorized disclosure of national security information very seriously. DOD organizations, including Aero, regularly emphasize to their workforces the importance of protecting national security information in accordance with information security laws, regulations, and processes. So, yeah, that's a big, long fucking string of government doublespeak bullshit, right? And what's interesting about it, to me, what's most interesting is, and this is pretty normal uh, if, if you're used to seeing government statements, what's most interesting is what they don't say. So when this video was first released to uh, to Corbell's YouTube, he uh, he added this this little uh, description to it that said UAP of unknown origin displayed transmedium capability and has been officially de designated by the United States intelligence agencies as a UAP. This designation is currently maintained. Now that assertion is not challenged in in this statement. At no point is the, uh, the the DOD saying, "Oh no, this has a perfectly rational explanation," like you know, or or even like we didn't designate this UAP or anything. Um, they're just choosing to say that we're not going to comment on the authenticity of alleged D DOD material that may have been leaked, which is also interesting because they're more or less admitting that it was leaked. Right. So like so, <laughs> remember back in like oh 2017 or so these videos started coming out and I remember a very similar statement uh 
<laughs> which of course we all know now are the famous Tic Tac videos, which which were filmed by the and and well owned, I guess, copyrighted by the U.S. government. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, and- they do this, you know. Oh, yeah. I don't get it. Like, why even say anything at all? Like, why? Well, they had to say something because they're obligated to. Um, whether they like it or not, if uh, if if citizens, especially the the media, reach out to the government in in good faith, like they're obligated to release some kind of of statement, and and part of that I think is uh, control. You know, they they want to have some control over the narrative because if if they don't say anything at all, then. Uh, you know, the people in the the UFO field can just run with it and create whatever kind of narrative that that they fucking want, right? And we also know can with with no comment, basically. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, well, just, this I, this at least on the surface. So if you're not you or or me, right? Sure. And you look at this, uh, you might go, "Oh, okay. Well, nothing to see here." You know. Um, they're basically just they're they're not admitting anything. Um, they're not going to comment on it. It doesn't seem to be that that big of a deal. I can push it to the back of my mind and whatever. Like if you know if if you're just like Joe newspaper, like just seeing this and in, in like with your morning coffee or something, right? Like you might not make a, a a huge deal out of it. And so they have that benefit, right? So they have to release something. Um. Also, oh shit, I completely forgot what I was going to say. Also, I don't know because I forgot what I was going to say. But <laughs> some kind of government all. cover up, that that much I'm sure of. I was going to say that Joe Newspaper is what they called me in high school. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good old <laughs> Joe Newspaper. That's back when we had newspapers. <laughs> right. And as soon as I said it, I was just like, shit, anybody under 30, they're going to be like a newspaper. <laughs> It's okay. I don't think we're cool enough to have listeners under 30. Um, Let's hope not because that, <laughs> that newspaper line is, it's going to fall flat. Right. They're like, what's, what is this news? They just immediately, I don't turn off their iPhones or however people listen to things. I don't know. <laughs> they turn off their jukebox. <laughs> right. As soon as I said, turn off, I was like, even that's an old timey thing to say. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, I just I hate this, you know. I just listen, I'll keep saying it. They're edging us. They're just edging us. They're just <laughs> right. going to keep edging us and uh we're not going to get anywhere, you know. Um I, I hate it. You know, and then they wonder, you know, oh god, where do all these conspiracies come from? Why doesn't anybody trust us? And here's the thing. Here's the approach that I would prefer better better. And that would be honest, okay? As a uh true crime big fan, you know, I understand that when a case breaks, you cannot release all the information up front during an investigation. You will compromise your investigation by doing so. Right. And that's why I have gone to bat for Grush. And I have said, look, uh, people are like, well, why doesn't he release this and that and the other? Because he can't. Because they're actively investigating his claims. So he can't be like, well, I've got dirt on this motherfucker. Because then this motherfucker now can go and try to cover his tracks. Okay. Okay. So I understand that. And I understand why they might put out these blanket terms where they're not admitting anything to it, but they're also not denying anything either. But if they just said, hey, look, you guys, first of all, they just talk to us like people. Hey, look, motherfuckers, we can't tell you everything about this right now. And that's that. It's an ongoing investigation and we will release information when we can do so. But they don't even give that much. And that's the part that gets so frustrating to me is that they don't just, they're not, they don't just level with you and tell you like why they're giving this blanket statement. (laughs) Right, right. Oh, um, I just remembered what the second part of what I was going to say before was. The other reason they, they end up having to release this stuff, I think, is because of the increased congressional interest in, in this stuff. Um, and so there are actually a lot of politicians now who take the, the subject seriously enough, or at least are willing to pretend that they do uh, to try to support their reelection campaigns. Sure. That these departments, they can't just ignore it anymore, because if they do, uh, there are Congress people who are, are going to make a big fucking stink about it, like a yeah. big fucking stink. So. Yeah. It's not it just politics in kinda... just straight political terms. It's politics and a sociological standard. 
um you know yeah. they're they're playing the game and i agree with that and you know they are they are under investigation right now we know that you know they are under uh a whistleblower investigation <laughs> So I can understand how their silence could then then make them look even guiltier. It can make them look bad. Um, right. But I again, I just am very. I don't. I guess I don't know what the harm is in saying, "Hey, yeah, we have this uh, unidentified." I mean, they've they've released other videos, right? They've declassified other things. What are what are they waiting on? You know, uh, it, then it does make you wonder. Well, what came of this? You know, this this didn't just happen yesterday. This happened like what three or four years ago. 2018 yeah i mean this has been going on for a long time you know what is it that they're investigating still are they investigating any of it um is it the rest of the video that i don't know they don't want to see the rest of the video because then we know that these aren't just drones like uh or they're not just um well i guess that's what kirk patrick says or, or you know was saying again when he was the president they're just drones but they're explainable um you know i don't know i i don't know what the end game is here um i just know that we're not going to get any answers <laughs> I, not so far i mean arrow has that big fancy website now for everybody who doesn't know what arrow is arrow is the all domain anomaly resolution office which is the uh the dod's current official investigation into ufos uh and they have this fancy new website just came out like september of last year i think and uh and ostensibly, it is to provide, well, it's to receive cases from all over. And then it's to provide um, official, like, declassified reports on cases. And so, according to this statement, uh, Arrow is investigating it, which is another admission, if you're willing to, right. to read between these lines, that there is something going on here. Because Arrow wouldn't be investigating it if they already fucking knew what it was. Um, and so Arrow is in investigating this, which means that it's weird. And it, it means that, like, according to them, we'll get some kind of official resolution at, at some point. But what that's going to look like is anybody's guess. And I would be fucking shocked if we ended up with, like, the full 17-minute video I think there's very little chance of that. I would love to be surprised. This is another one of those things I would just love to be wrong about. But uh, again, I just, I would be fucking shocked. Yeah. Well, and let me make that very clear. Let me make it very, unless something major has changed, Arrow doesn't investigate civilian reports and videos. They only investigate uh, military involvement with this stuff. Is that correct? Um, by and large, I want to say they are beginning to move into investigating civilian uh, pilots. So if you work, okay. like if you're a pilot for a major airline or something and right. you have some kind of sighting, um, if they aren't now, I think they are uh, moving towards investigating those as as well. You know, speaking of, um, not to really, you know, just totally flip flop here, um, speaking of civilian pilots if you or anyone you know uh works at chicago o'hare airport <laughs> uh get a hold of myself or tobias whalen um, do it you know we got some questions we'd like to ask about things um you know again anyone you know if you know somebody that that works there um have them reach out to one of us or you reach out to us let us know let us know how we can get into contact with your family friend whomever uh so that we can speak to them about some things related yes. to anonymity uh, guaranteed for yeah, your absolutely. protection if you prefer absolutely um i don't push that enough but every little bit i try to get it out there no, nothing yet but you know I'll, I'll keep pushing yeah um so yeah interesting well we'll just continue to watch this jellyfish uh disappointingly not really a jellyfish ufo video so <laughs> <laughs> right i think it looks more like an imperial probe droid personally okay that's a that's a good guess. Um, right. It's like a Rorschach test. What do you see in this? <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Star Wars lately, so I mean, checks out. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I'm Makes still sense. going with balloons, but I'm only like going with balloons until I see this thing go in and out of the water. That's what mm -hmm. I need, to see. and I'm not going to see it. You know? No. Uh, that, well, that's my yeah. big fucking issue with it too, right? Like they talk about all this like these transmedium capabilities and how they saw it go into this lake and then it like shot out of the fucking lake. 
And, and like all that? we get are the two minutes of video where it's just bobbing along like a like a fucking idiot doing nothing. <laughs> Like me on a daily basis, yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> right? It's like, yeah. It's 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 the UFO equivalent of me like getting up to go check the fridge for snacks. Like, right. who cares? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Until I see something different, there's a lot of circumstances surrounding it. But I mean, I just I gotta go with Occam's razor in this case. Until I see something that says otherwise, uh, you know, I uh, I just gotta say it's balloons, and I hope it's not. I want it to be something else, um, but. You know, the ball's in your court, Arrow. Prove me wrong. Arrow is not here to prove you wrong. If anything, <laughs> they'll be like, it's super balloons and we proved it. And if you don't think it's balloons, you're under arrest. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I, I, I'm i going with uh, where I end up most of the time in these cases. And that's unexplained. I'm going with unexplained. Maybe it's balloons. Maybe it's an Imperial probe droid. Maybe it's two Imperial probe droids in a trench coat. I don't know. Unexplained. It's, uh, you know, the Wicked Witch of the West. I don't know. You know, it Maybe. could be anything. Could, um, could be anything. That's it's, right. It's uh, question mark. Question. And what I mean by that it is, is that it is anomalous question marks clustered together floating in the sky. Right. Um, <laughs> just to make it that more mysterious. <laughs> Anyway, is that, is that your news? That is. That is all the news fit to print. Okay. Well, let's go back to, um, let's talk about death again. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Good. I needed a pick-me-up, so. <laughs> um, no, this is a, a very interesting case. It's something that a lot of people dub most of the time uh, unsolved or unresolved or unexplained um you know and i can see why i can see why i disagree yeah. but i can see why right. um and we will kind of get into the details so some backstory um february 19th 1994 at about 8 15 p.m a woman by the name of gloria ramirez is taken to the riverside general hospital in riverside california uh via ambulance by the way that part is important uh, Gloria is conscious, but she is incoherent. Uh, she's experiencing really bad uh, heart palpitations and uh, re really high heart rates, really low blood pressure. Um, she is not doing well. She can't breathe. Uh, like I said, incoherent mess, and she gets taken into the ER. Um, you know, she's ru she's rushed in. They expect her because, again, she's coming via ambulance, and they start immediately um, administering drugs, a myriad of stuff. It's kind of weird because when I research these things, um, I, I don't usually just pull up the Wikipedia page and go off of it. I, I, I read multiple accounts and try to find original reports if I can. I had inconsistent results trying to figure out what it was exactly that she was given at the ER. Um, but what I know for sure is that it seems to be across the board, whatever the details are, painkillers sedatives and then medications to try to control her heart rate and her blood pressure um what they are exactly i don't know i don't know if it matters it might to some people but i don't have those details so um they you know start mixing her with this drug cocktail they're doing their uh you know their vitals and things like that um and then things get really weird really quickly um you know first of all there are there's there's a nurse in the room with her and a medical assistant there's nurse susan kane and then there's medical assistant julie gorchinsky okay and they are doing their job uh they note a couple of things about gloria they note that first of all she has a fruity garlic smell coming from her breath um which is not a good sign <laughs> i can tell you that uh, but who knows maybe she had some strawberries dipped in garlic you know i don't know um you know and then they started kind of doing a couple things to her um you know one thing that they did and i can't tell which one came first either also inconsistent i think they defibrillated her first so they had cut open her shirt uh went to go um as my notes say give her the shocker and when they when they <laughs> because of course it says that i'm a 12 year old boy um when they did this when they had removed her her top they had noticed that she was covered and like this weird like oily sheen 
but again it's the er right people don't people normally when they're rushed to the er like that first of all they've been sick for a while they probably haven't showered and who knows how long you know their, their hygiene is not up to par they don't know what kind of you know condition anybody has been in up until that point they're not that shocked huh, by it um so they defibrillate her and then they start which actually had gotten her heart back on track but then they started to draw her blood and this is where it got fucking off the rails okay so susan kane um starts drawing her blood and what she had noticed was that you know immediately she starts drawing and this strong ammonia smell is coming from like the tubes of the blood draw and you know she thought that was kind of weird and julie also thought that it was kind of weird they were kind of like it was kind of strange um but didn't think anything of it and then they kind of look in the tubes of the blood the vials of blood and they, they notice that there are these like crystallized manila colored well crystals uh, in her blood <laughs> she had like glitter blood um and it was bizarre and then susan fucking faints just fucking passes out and this was strange not completely unheard of um especially if susan were new in her career it didn't really say how long she had been uh you know an er nurse but you know, sometimes certain things just get to you and it just happens. Um, you see a lot of really traumatic shit in the ER. So it, it's not typical that it happens. Um, but, you know, so they're like, oh my gosh, Susan, are you okay? And then Julie all of a sudden starts to feel very lightheaded. Um, she's like, look, I gotta go sit down. I feel not good. But then she fucking passes out. She faints, hits the floor. Um, and this, you know, is where it, like I said, it just kind of continues to grow more and more people start becoming afflicted. Um, a respiratory therapist who was working in the ER that day, she fainted. Um, other people started complaining about feeling lightheaded, feeling sick, feeling nauseous. So they decided to go ahead and evacuate the entire ER and put all the patients, all the staff, everybody outside, except for a select few who were actively working to try to stabilized miss ramirez and um unfortunately they were unable to do so uh about 8 50 so i mean not even 45 minutes later she was she was pronounced dead and and in total um it affected 23 people ended up having some type of illness five of which were hospitalized so i'm gonna pause there before we get into what the fuck um Tobias, I know you researched this topic, but just kind of like up front, just pretend you don't know anything about it. Um, what's your first thoughts about this situation? Well, you know what? Uh, there's a lot that's that's interesting about it. And one of the things that I find most immediately interesting, just at first glance, is that this this mystery malady, right, that um, that seemingly was affecting nurses and, and doctors, right? It didn't affect everybody. It didn't. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's some people, but, but not everybody. And, um, and well, actually, you know what, let me, let me back up. Cause you asked for like my first thought, my first thought yes. actually is that it is devastatingly sad to see a 31 year old woman die. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. With, with treat like a, a treatable, was it cervical cancer? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Because yeah. that's like she had a, a a fairly treatable cancer and she was thirty one and she died and that's fucking horrible. Yeah. Um. So that's that's first thought. Thought number one. But then thought number two. Uh. Once once you uh you you kind of try to um, you know uh um, uh, not move past necessarily, but you can't let your uh emotions sort of uh uh cloud your judgment when, when, when you're looking at the, uh, the, the facts of the case. Right. Um, and so, yeah, thought number two, of course, is that it's very odd that it's affecting some people and not everybody. Mm -hmm. And that, um, that puts me in mind of things like mass hysteria, which of course was an explanation levied, uh, uh, for this particular event. Although I don't think it's, it's the, the actual, uh, answer, but it definitely was something people were were throwing around, um, and uh, and then also back like way, all, all the way back in 1994, because there's been a, there's been work done on this and stuff written about it since. But you go back to 1994, and the immediate reaction of her family was that 
this was all part of a hospital cover up to cover up how they fucked up and uh and she died as as a result of some kind of malpractice and uh and so the the hospital um concocted this story of her being toxic or something to to disguise how how they screwed up and uh, and that's that's an angle worth discussing again i i don't think that's what what happened but if you immediately dismiss it like i don't think that 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 we're doing our our due diligence because there are some interesting components to that really you know um so I, I, I guess I, I don't want to get fully into that yet because you asked for like initial thoughts, but, but <laughs> yeah. those are the, the, uh, the things that just like occurred to me right away. Sure. No, that's fine. Um, completely understandable. You know, a lot of people, of course they hear, you know, she is dubbed the toxic lady. Um, you know, they hear about this. Oh, a patient walks into the ER and makes everybody else sick with this mystery illness, you know? Um, it's, it's so mysterious and unexplained. Um, it, it's not really when you dig into it. I am just going to say this up front. I don't think we have a proper explanation for this and I don't think we're ever going to get one. And I think that that is just due to the mishandling, um, of the investigation that took place. I'm not happy with the final theory on it. Um, there are just, just some things about it that don't necessarily make a lot of sense, I'm not happy with any of the theories on it, but we're going to talk about all the theories. And of course, I <laughs> guess what, you guys? I'm not a medical professional. <laughs> what? I don't know if you knew this. Yeah, I, I'm not. Um, you know, I'm just not. Uh, so, of course, take what I say with an absolute grain of salt, um, you know, as far as my personal opinion goes about it. Um, but as somebody who has thoroughly investigated this for the last week, <laughs> at least, obviously, I'm an expert, you know. <laughs> um <laughs> clearly you're like an honorary doctor at this point right <laughs> they may as well just give me my phd you guys can call me dr asher <laughs> um you know so anyway um it, it is fun and mysterious it's like one of those you know there's like different like er shows or whatever that have like cases like this and it's just fucking wild and out there right and this is definitely one of those um but you know i'd say the og of that um you know like sex sent me to the er that's a good that's a good show if you're ever really bored um <laughs> people shove things up their butthole all the time and it gets stuck apparently uh okay. don't do that don't do that right that's simple solution like they there are specific devices that are sold that are safe to use don't use anything else right don't use anything other than those devices um i think all packaging if it doesn't belong in your butthole, it should probably come with a disclaimer. Don't put in your butthole. We'd have to put it on literally everything. Literally, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, but then at least, hey, you know what? They've covered their ends, you know. If we could put Made in China on everything, you're right. If if we could put right. like Made in China or Made in America, because every fucking thing that exists that is sold anywhere in this country has one of those two labels on it. If we could put that on everything, we could put, don't put this in your butthole. I'm serious. The amount of people this happens to, it needs to happen. You know, I'm going to go to the grocery store and write on every single banana. Do you not said, put just butthole. not for butt play. <laughs> Ask me how I know. No, I'm just <laughs> um, anyway, uh, just trying to make light of a very serious topic. Uh, but, you know, let's get into it. Yes, you're right. Uh, Gloria Ramirez. Let, let's let's talk about that for a second. I, I do want to um remind you guys this was a, a person this was a woman a real life woman and um that part's not talked about enough you know we discussed the fact of you know we just discuss this case all over um you could find you know i'm not the first podcast to cover this topic um but gloria ramirez was only a 31 year old woman who yes was afflicted with late stage i think it was like stage three cervical cancer um and she unfortunately you know she she died and you know the the circumstances of her death are pretty well known that it was kidney failure right at the end of the day yeah. that's what killed her and the kidney failure was likely due to symptoms of the cervical cancer um i believe she either one of two things happened with gloria she either did not have insurance or the it was sound so late that they could not treat it because there was just no hope for it anyway 
Um, both of those things could be true, right? Uh, cervical cancer we can catch pretty early on. I am a cervical cancer survivor um, who actually had kind of miraculous circumstances. I had cervical cancer, right? It was terrible and they were going to remove everything. And then I got went and got biopsied two more times just for them to be sure, I guess. And now right. it's gone. Wow. It's completely gone. That's awesome. And thank you. Uh, I didn't do anything though, uh, but thank you. You know, still kudos to you for not having cervical cancer. I don't anymore. have it. I could get it eventually again, but you know, the explanation. I'm like, does this ha- isn't that like a miracle? Like, should I like thank Jesus or something? And the doctors are like, no, uh, no, it just happens. We probably just honestly, when we were biopsying it, cut it all out. <laughs> you know, you look happen. down at that doctor's name tag, and it just says Jesus. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, but the point is, is like, it's very curable. Like it has a significant survival rate because we have all this screening and stuff. And this was only 1994, you know, um, again, what's the solution at the end of the day for cervical cancer? There's tons of things they can do. Um, at the end of the day though, they can just take everything out and like, you should live (laughs) unless, you are not able to partake in those screenings. Okay, so just my PSA to all of our female listeners, go 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 get your pap smear. Go go get your smear done. Go get smeared up at the guy. Gotta get them pap smeared. <laughs> you gotta get it smeared. And uh, you know, just just do it. It's it's easy, you know. i I know some of you women. I listen, I know what you've been through sexually. You can handle a pap smear. Um <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh but yeah gloria ramirez i mean she she left behind two kids and a husband she had a whole family that clearly cared about her very very much because they they had continued to fight for her because they did believe genuinely that the medical field as a whole was responsible for her death and maybe they were in a way but maybe not in the way that they were legally fighting for so um you know, rest in peace to, to Gloria. With that being said, um, let's talk about what happened immediately after her death and the investigation that took place here. Um, so Gloria, you know, what they did was they called in a hazmat crew to come check out the ER. They were convinced that this was some type of gas leak or, you know, something weird was going on here. And they had the hazmat crew come in. They found nothing. They, they didn't find anything strange uh, going on. They had no idea um, what to make of it. But what they did was they took Gloria's body and they put her in this like aluminum coffin and then put her into an airtight room and kind of left her there for a minute. Didn't really um, want to do the autopsy yet. Didn't really know what to do with her. Uh, when they did eventually perform the autopsy, it was a hazmat crew in suits that, that did perform it. I mean, they treated this woman as if she was radioactive you know but in all fairness they didn't know if she was or wasn't you know um so that's interesting uh it was the department of health and human services that took on the investigation uh, to try to figure out what happened with the people that fell ill and you know as tobias said uh they did eventually land on this being a mass hysteria event after everybody's blood work that was involved came back normal um what right. do you think about mass hysteria what's your what's your oh opinion? boy um you know i actually pulled up like i don't know six or seven articles that i had written over the past five years that, that all deal with with mass hysteria quote unquote in in some way and most of this you know most of the things i end up writing about will be like let me give you some headlines uh, school children in Peru suffer hysteria following encounter with Ouija board and black magic. Oh, yeah. Or um, it's another one. Uh, wailing ghost reportedly terrifies inmates in Indian women's prison. Or uh, let's see. A girl injured during ghost scare that closed school in Ghana. So it's usually related to, um, at least in, in the, the cases that I deal with, the, the, the things that I've written. It ends up being used as a convenient explanation for any kind of mass paranormal incident uh, for which we don't have a better explanation. So if we don't have anything else to point at, uh, it's people just go, shit, mass hysteria, I fucking guess that shit was crazy, you know, Um, 
And so I, uh, I guess like, what, where do I land on it? What do I think of it? Like, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan. Um, I'm not saying that I don't think mass hysteria is possible. I'm not saying that I don't think that, that it exists. Uh, but I do think that it is very often used as a convenient explanation uh, when all else fails. And I think it would be more honest in a lot of these cases where mass hysteria is 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 cited to just say, you know what? We don't fucking know. We have no idea. Um, it could have been a, a lot of things instead of always being like, oh, mass hysteria. You know? <laughs> yeah, I no, I agree. Um, I think that mass hysteria makes sense in certain situations. I'm so, well, I don't know what I just said. And and certain <laughs> circumstances, it makes sense. Um, you know, when you think of like a major event that feels apocalyptic, okay, something fucking horrible. Um, you know, I don't know, a terroristic attack, a, a active shooter. When you when you find yourself in those situations. Um, your your fight you know fight or flight kicks in and you are again cut for survival like that is your number one thing your brain is going to omit a lot of details it is just purely going to survive on instinct while you are in the middle of a panic and rightfully so you're in the middle of a panic you're in the middle of something fucking crazy you know and, and horrifying and potentially deadly um and then after the fact, when you are asked to then relay what just happened to you during the middle of that panic, mm. um, it is not unheard of that your brain is going to kind of fill in extra things in there. Um, that, I think, should be more what mass hysteria is, aside from like, uh, you know, where they chalk it up to different things. Um, we're going to cover it on the show eventually. I, the most notable case I can think of the dancing plague in France, where people dance themselves to death, to fucking death. These people dance until they fucking dropped. And uh, that was just mass hysteria, right? There's nothing else <laughs> going on there. And that just doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, you're, again, you're not wired to to harm yourself you're wired to survive um so it's weird that your body would do things that would put you in a compromising position and then they just go oh yeah mass hysteria anyway i know i agree with you largely i think that is a cop-out answer and a, definitely in this case it's a cop-out answer and this is how we know it's a cop-out answer because julie gorchinski <laughs> she wouldn't have it uh she said okay motherfuckers this mass hysteria i just spent two weeks in the icu I was being treated for hepatitis and uh, avascular necrosis. Literally, my knee started rotting on the inside. Like, <laughs> I had no problems before. <laughs> um, so what's up with this? So you're just going to tell me these are unrelated? And of course, they're like, oh, yeah, it's unrelated. Not related at all. Um, you well, know what, what else is weird about this is there were, uh, there were three autopsies done on, on, on this body. Just to give people some idea. Yeah. of the effort that that went into investigating this and how baffling the the case really was. You had that first autopsy which was already mentioned where yeah, they're in an airtight cubicle and pathologists are wearing protective suits and shit. It's like something out of a fucking science fiction movie. Yeah. Um then there was a second examination a month later and then a third one that was demanded by the uh, the 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 family because again, they are, and this is notable, they are so sure that something fucked up is going on with, with their dead loved one that they're not giving up on this, this, this narrative. You know, when the, the hospital comes out and says it's this or it's that, uh, they're just not having it, you know. And this hospital actually had uh, a history of being cited for uh different um like different uh uh fuck ups basically like they weren't like <laughs> for instance health code violations but fuck ups yeah, yeah there you go so i just <laughs> i i had one of those what do you like a like a brain health code violation where you can't think of something that you're trying to think of no but like a, a, a year before like this happened uh like literally like a year uh, be, before this, um, they were, they were cited because their first floor emergency room was permeated with sewer gas. Right. So like, that's not great. 
Yeah. Uh, a couple years before that, uh, two employees sought medical treatment after a, a possible leak of hazardous gas from a sterilizer. Um, and yeah, in, in 92, this isn't as relevant, but um, the, in an in inspection found that there was algae growing in a water reservoir. So like that one's not maybe not as relevant. But like the other two, yeah, you've got like sewer gas leaking into their emergency room. That's not a good look. <laughs> and uh, and you've got fucking two employees who literally had to seek medical treatment because of a leak of hazardous gas. Right. And right. so like it's not weird to me that especially when the the explanation that hasn't been covered yet, but I'm sure we're working our way up to that um, that uh, that there was some kind of toxic element to uh, to to this this woman's body that the uh, the family sees that and goes like, well, what fuck this? Are you covering up another fucking sewer leak? You know, <laughs> which they're definitely within reason to to do that. And, you know, let me tell you, if you ever have a have a loved one die unexpectedly and you feel like there's a, there's anything wrong there, you are a thousand percent within reason to hire your own medical examiner and have them do an autopsy. Yes. 100 percent. Yes, that is your right. Uh, so just, you know, keep that in the back of your head in case you ever need it, because you never know when you might need it. Um right. You know, again, the family is, I agree, they're within reason. Now, she is very sick, right, with cervical cancer, but but she had just been diagnosed like a couple months before this. Like, this was all still pretty new to them. Um, but, you know, because of the history of this, um, I guess, unclean hospital, <laughs> we'll say, right. uh, there, it's not entirely wrong for them to be like, okay, well, how do we know it was Gloria that caused this? How do we know it's not you that caused this, you know? Right. And like, this is why, what I was talking about uh, before where, I mean, generally speaking, yeah. Like if you want in objective opinion on something, you don't go to the family of, of, of the victim because they're yeah. not going to be capable of it. But at the same time, if, 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 if you can step back and sort of objectively examine their, their issue, um, and you do find that, uh, that there might be cause for you to at least hear them out or, or take them seriously, then I, I think that, that you owe it to them to do that. Oh, at minimum. Right. Um, you know, because again, they're the ones that have to grapple with this for the rest of their life, you know, um, for, for, you know, everybody else, for you guys listening to the show, this is just another, another weekly, you know, Wednesday show for you, you know, um, these people are still dealing with this every day, you know, and, uh, they, they deserve, uh, every bit of closure. And I think that they definitely deserve to be heard. And sometimes, you know, just being heard is, is therapeutic in and of itself. Now, again, I completely understand why they went after the hospital. Um, because it is weird. Let's back up a little bit. Well, no, let's we'll continue forward a little bit more and then we'll we'll get into theories here. Um, you know, eventually, you know, especially after Gorchensky was like, wait a minute, I got all these issues. Um, the Lawrence Livermore National La Laboratory steps in. They take over the investigation. Okay. They're like, well, hold on a second. Now, a lot of something that a lot of people like to bring up about Livermore is that they deal with a lot of nukes <laughs> like that's what they do they study uh nukes and nuclear power but they also do a lot of this kind of stuff they study um you know chemical warfare and stuff like that so this, it, it's not really that unheard of that they would step in and, and offer their expertise all right um but they step in and they're the ones that did conduct the second autopsy and they did find more um than what was initially discovered by the uh you know department of health and human services um they had found that gloria's body and this was i think six this autopsy took place like six weeks after her death um did contain a fuck ton of dimethyl sulfone and your body does naturally produce this okay it is something that that can naturally occur within you but they found like i don't know it was like three times the amount that a normal body would have and the shelf so life much. of this stuff is only like a couple days so the fact that six weeks out she still had that much in her system was like they were like well hold on what the fuck this is weird you know and 
I, I don't I don't want to break that one yet. I don't want to break that theory and exactly what's going to happen yet. But they did find that uh, an explanation that was different than what the Department of Health came up with, which is a red flag again for the family. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I'd be concerned as a family member. Like, well, wait a minute, you motherfucker said it was kidney failure and everybody was just freaking out in the ER. Like now you're telling me that she's got this chemical in her body. What is this? You know. Um, but I want to back up a little bit to the beginning to when Gloria showed up via ambulance. Like I said, this is important. She comes in from the ambulance. When, when you are taken in an ambulance at minimum, um, they do go ahead and start you on oxygen. And she was started on oxygen right then and there. And none of the EMS people had reported any strange symptoms. They were not victim to this mystery illness. So that's I find interesting with the explanation that comes out later on. Um, and then some of the other stuff doesn't really like it, it tracks, but it doesn't track. Um, again, not a medical professional. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about what Livermore had found and what conclusion they came to. Um, so Livermore had said that most likely Gloria was doing an at home remedy type of thing for her cervical cancer um, she was slathering herself in this product known as uh, dimethyl sulfoxide which a lot of people have used for a lot of different ailments historically and nobody really uses anymore you can still purchase it um, at the time however there was not a medical grade version of it so the only kind that people were using was like straight up of a concentrate of this stuff that you would get from like the hardware store um, which is used in all kinds of stuff. It's used as, as, as a degreaser. It's used as paint thinner. It is a, an amazing solvent. And so. <laughs> right. That's what it is. <laughs> no, it, it, it totally, it, you're hundred percent correct. Like at the time that she would have been able to get a hold of it, it would not have, because originally when it came out in the sixties and, and I think in, into the seventies, uh, you could still purchase it as a like a a, a, a pain reliever. Right. Like, it's like um, a topical solution. It was, yeah. You could um, if you had if you know like athletes with like achy knees, they could rub some of this this DM DMSO cream on it, and uh, and and that's that was its original purpose. Um, but that was over for you know fifteen twenty years. Yeah. By the time she would have been using it, and a hundred percent she would have needed to buy like the degreaser or something from the, the, the hardware store and just be using that as like a home remedy. Yeah. Well, yeah. cause we, cause it, it turned out that like DMSO can like fuck up your eyesight and stuff. So people were like, no, thank you. And it was generally, you know, discontinued for that purpose. Yeah. We stopped taking it. I mean, like I said, you can actually, you can still get topical solutions with it now, but it's not, I mean, it's like 40% D you know, DMS. So it's not actually like, it's not, you know, 98% or whatever it was. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm looking at a picture of one right now from like, I don't, it looks like the sixties or seventies and it's like 70% DMSO or something. Yeah. Yeah, which is, you know, a, a, lot. a big, a big deal. You know, it's, it, it's a lot, but it's not as, it's not, that concentrated um you know and in the chem and i'm no chemist i know you're surprised but i'm not um and you know i can't tell you exactly what 20 percent means um but according to the people over here at lawrence livermore national laboratory um you know she was using a concentrate and and that's what that's what they had found that was the oily substance that was all over her body they believe yeah. not that there was any proof they didn't take any samples of of this oily substance um, and test them but that's what they believe was on her body and this is where it gets weird because it is a chemical compound and, and an almost pure chemical compound when it is mixed with certain circumstances it causes weird things to happen so the first bad move if she were slathered in in this chemical is that they gave her oxygen yes and, and when you give oxygen to this specific um compound it then creates dimethyl sulfone which is what they found in her system now they also say that when they are mixed together and they create dimethyl sulfone they create those weird crystals that they had seen in her blood um 
But the killer compound that came into play here was actually when they defibrillated her, when they shocked her. Um, the heat giving into what they were doing at the time had then changed this up once again and converted this to dimethyl sulfate. Um, or, or, or maybe and, I don't really know, it's not very clear. It was either when they shocked her that caused this to happen or it's when they drew her blood and the um, temperature change from her body temperature to the temp the cold temperature of the ER, you ever been in a hospital, it's freezing in there, um, converted this to the sulfate. And that is what was affecting everybody. It turned into a gas, sulfate's a gas. And that is what people were being, that's what they were passing out over and feeling nauseous for and this, that, and the other. Um, initial thoughts on that one, Tobias? I like it. I do. I like it as in in an explanation. It, it checks a lot of boxes for me. So yeah, I mean, basically to to, to break it down because uh, I'm looking at the uh, the abstract of a possible chemical explanation for the events associated with the death of Gloria Ramirez at Riverside General Hospital, um, which is the uh, official scientific paper submitted to the forensics. Uh, the scientific journal Forensic Science International by uh, Patrick, uh, Dr. Patrick Grant, uh, along with some some other people, um, and uh, and yeah, so it, it it depends on the oxidation of this dimethyl sulfoxide uh, through dimethyl sulfone to dimethyl sulfate, and what's interesting about it is is you're right, like it it, it creates this. Um, highly volatile and toxic agent. And it can be pretty hazardous to people in relatively small amounts. Also, interesting, like interestingly enough, it doesn't stick around. So, you know, like you, like it's, it's, it's not going to be hanging around in, in measurable quantities to where you would notice it after this. So, all of the like nausea and, and dizziness and shortness of breath and everything, these are all symptoms of exposure to dimethyl sulfate. Mm -hmm. And so like you would get hit with these symptoms. And then if somebody came around later, they're not going to find this stuff there. But finding the dimethyl sulfone uh, built up in, in her body, yeah. along with some of the, the other um, anecdotal evidence, I think is good enough uh, evidence to point towards this as a likely solution, if not 100% proven, because as you pointed out earlier, they really fucking dropped the ball on the early investigation of this. Yeah. Like when you, when they needed, because again, since this stuff doesn't stick around, you'd have to look for it right away. And, um, and that first autopsy and the, the initial explanation of just being like, Oh, mass hysteria, I guess. Um, was total bullshit. Yeah. And because of that dismissal of, of, you know, any good investigation, like dismissal of this uh, uh, event as anything other than, than just bullshit, uh, we didn't get what we needed to, to straight up prove this. Now all we have is the, uh, the, the, the leftovers and like circumstantial kind of, of, of evidence. And, um, and, what is basically in 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 open case because of that and it wasn't you know that's something to note typically when someone dies in a hospital um it's especially somebody who's got you know late stage cancer it's not a criminal investigation you right. know they're not coming out there to, to pick up evidence which is why um you know sometimes medical mal malpractice can be very hard to prove because they they're not you know we're, we're supposed to be trusting our doctors and our medical care you know usually um they don't come in and start investigating and looking to build a case you know for a criminal investigation um so they're going to miss stuff like that well i mean the autopsy and stuff that's just piss poor that first one was done really badly um <laughs> right but, but you know the thing like i've never tried to fucking perform an autopsy in a fucking full hazmat suit you know i mean it's difficult i don't know um, maybe they just didn't know what to do. You know, maybe they were just as baffled. And so therefore, I mean, it doesn't make it okay that they mishandled it, but you know, there's reasons why they could mishandle it that aren't nefarious. Right. Um, oh yeah. I don't think that like, I don't think that there's nas uh, like, like necessarily, 
um, any malevolent intent, um, I, I would be much more willing to ascribe general incompetence to, sure. to that early investigation. Yeah. And, you know, which is oddly enough, something that we've talked about a lot is medical incompetence on the show since you've been oh, here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, seems just, it just keeps weird. popping up. It just keeps, yeah, it's just, that's what it is. Um, maybe we should do a spinoff series, uh, Medical Malpractice Mondays. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just hope no local doctors listen to this. Um, because if they are, like, if there are any doctors listening in, like, southern Wisconsin, you guys are great. You're amazing. So if I need to come see you, it's it's all good. You know, like I'm on your side. Um, it's it's everybody outside of you who yeah, is else. doing all of the malpractice. Yeah, everyone else. It's just terrible. Um, you know, so the the issue here. Okay, so let's let's think about Gloria. She's using this this home remedy, right? She's using this uh, unproven thing to try to treat her cancer because again, she doesn't. We have a fucked up medical system, and they're not going to treat her for whatever reason. And this is something that some people say is historically a remedy that's used in like Hispanic and Latina culture. Um, Latin X, I think is the correct term now. I, I don't know what it is, but anyway, again, this is like old family traditional, you know, type of thing. However, this is where the issues come into play that I have with it, because I, I agree with you, Tobias, uh, upon initially reading that, I go, okay, that checks out. I like that. But after digging into it further, man, I don't know if I like that. Um, so the family comes out and goes, okay, well, we don't know what the fuck you're talking about. She's never used whatever that thing is, right. ever. And, well, that's a big hole in the story. Now, granted, there are people that say that the family actively denied her ever using this product to treat cancer because they wanted to win their lawsuit. And that could be the case you know but it's the way that the family when they hired their own pathologist to to conduct the autopsy on gloria the way that that went is very suspicious to me so by the time they get around to the third autopsy uh they really couldn't complete it accurately um her whole heart was missing it was gone and you know this happens a lot actually again in, in these settings um, her body was stored incorrectly, so she was so decomposed, they really couldn't get accurate measures of anything. Um, and then, you know, on top of that, the blood that, you know, the vile blood that had the crystals in it, which would also be very telling, right? If you could just test that blood, you could tell a lot, was gone. You know, right. I don't like that. Um, it's not great. And that's what I was talking about uh, earlier, where the parts of this investigation were fucked up early enough where we're, we just won't get closure now, um, even though I think right. that the the dimethyl sulfate explanation is by far the, the, the best. Because the most now, and this is where we get into sort of the nuance of 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 looking for. Uh, uh, answers or, or objective investigation from like grieving families, you know, because there's a point here where the, uh, the, the evidence says one thing and they say another. And so I have to start asking myself stuff like, well, you know what? Families don't always know what people are doing, frankly, That's you true. know, um, she could have been using it and they would have no fucking idea. Uh, That's true. Or like you said, they could be denying it because they are very unhappy with with the uh, hospital. And hey, what's one little white lie if you can put these assholes in their fucking place finally? You yeah. know, um, or they're so, just in denial. I mean, death is hard, right? You know? So at that point, you have to go. Okay, well, we have this this pretty solid scientific evidence here, and then we have your totally unproven word. And uh, how do these things weigh against each other? Well, unfortunately for them, uh, in at least to me, uh, the, the the work of 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 Grant and uh, and company in uh, in investigating this holds more weight than the the word of this family because there's actually some real physical evidence to support what they're saying in terms of of their chemical explanation. 
Right, because either way, she did have tons and tons and tons of dimethyl sulfone in her system. Yeah, <laughs> that's know? weird as shit. So where did that come from? Yeah, you know, it um, didn't just appear. Right, it, right. And so, I mean, there is, I think, so, okay. So, in the family hiring their own pathologist to conduct an autopsy, had they been able to do it successfully, they definitely could have come up come to the same conclusion right oh hey you know the uh these people were correct um this is what we think happened because we were able to test this and this and this and our information adds up to theirs they weren't able to do that which offers just even a shred of doubt and to a grieving family that is a golden ticket and yeah. you know it's unfortunate that it is that way because even you know i i agree i think that the the dmso explanation i think for the most part it's solid science it does check out but then why i mean you know the 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 missing parts and the in the you know decomposition stuff none of that that is proven like that's for real like that actually why did they let her sit there and rot like that why didn't they preserve it correctly um, I can they can't even keep sewer gas out of their emergency room, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, that's fair, <laughs> but I'm just saying, I understand where the shred of doubt comes into play. I can completely empathize with that in the situation because it, there is some shred of doubt there. Um, here's what it's not. Okay. I'm going to tell you what okay. it's not. We're, we're going to share some, you know, we're going to share some pretty out there, um, theories okay oh boy i can't wait to hear how like aliens are responsible god damn it that was my explanation for it uh i just cool. guessed i that was a total guess i want to hear it like how are, <laughs> how are aliens responsible um i don't think aliens are responsible but some people do okay. uh that wasn't something that i was really going to bring up in, in a in a serious way but let's entertain it for a second some people think that gloria ramirez herself could have been an alien or that Gloria Ramirez was an abductee who had recently been experimented on, and the gas was some result of that somehow, some way. Um, it's like in the X Files. Like if you if you damage one of those alien like uh, bounty hunters or whatever, and uh, and you're not careful, then you will totally die because of uh, toxic gas. Allegedly, that's where the inspiration for that episode came from. Is this case? There you go. Fun fact. Um, yes. You know, as somebody who studies ufology, I've never come across a case like this in ufology. Have you? No. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, no, no, no. hundred uh, percent not. No. Never. So I'm going to just you know throw that one out. Um, there's no proof of that at all. Not, not at all, period. Um, <laughs> unless maybe the aliens were the ones rubbing the DMS, DMSO all over her um because they know better than me i you know just no i'm not even gonna say that let's not entertain that idea <laughs> well, it's, it's absolutely it 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 is asinine and what what okay it's totally asinine and ridiculous but here's why i love it it's because <laughs> because few things illustrate so well the the paranormal community as a whole. So I, I include ufology and, and cryptozoology and everything sort of under that umbrella when I'm, I'm talking about this. So few things illustrate so well the paranormal community's ability to confuse or, or conflate, really, speculation with evidence and then use that as proof for a hypo for in hypothesis that makes no fucking sense, and that's just the best. They're like, well, wait, toxic gas, right? You know, like, and there's no explanation for it. Well, what if? Hear me out. Aliens produce dimethyl sulfate naturally, yeah. and so when she was, uh, her skin was punctured by the needle of the doctors. It released the alien gas that exists inside of her. And that's what was affecting them. And then like some jackass sitting next to him, you know what? That makes sense. I believe that a hundred percent. Yep. You know, I'm going to get that tattooed on my body. I believe it so much. <laughs> Hell yes. You cracked it. Yeah. It happens an embarrassing amounts. Uh, <laughs> um refer to this month's episode xana the bigfoot um <laughs> <laughs> it happens a lot and it, like i said it, it's very embarrassing and uh people fucking just believe it they just fucking do they just they make stuff up and then they use the shit they just made up as evidence 
for their hypothesis, which is also just totally made up. Yeah. It's the fucking best. It, it is completely out there. And, you know, I, I will say that, like, potential toxic gas, right, alien toxic gas, there have been um, contactee reports of maybe something potentially similar. But in most of those cases, it's kind of more – it's not usually referred to as, like, gas. Um, it's, like, radiation, right? Um, oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Like, there have been credible cases of, of people – having radiation burns or, or radiation poisoning after like a, a, a close contact event with a, uh, in, in actual UFO. Sure. hundred percent. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I, you know, I, as far as alien goes, um, I don't think that there was any alien involvement here. Uh, but yeah, well, we don't even know if like the, the credible UFO cases we have that actually resulted in radiation burns, um, or anything like that were extraterrestrial. Yeah, we right. just know that they were unidentified flying objects, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, it's a good segue into the next theory is the radiation theory for Gloria Ramirez, um, which, you know, it, it's fun. Out of the theories that I think are least likely, it's my most favorite, um, that uh, Gloria Ramirez had somehow gotten a hold of some type of chemotherapy, some type of backyard chemotherapy, which isn't completely unfounded you know some people are like well where would she get radiation materials actually that's kind of a whole thing uh, <laughs> that does happen because the healthcare system sucks so fucking much um <laughs> you know that maybe she was taking uh chemotherapy drugs and she became so radiated that she was affecting the people around her just she herself was was radiated and therefore everybody was becoming sick um but wouldn't the level of radiation for you to feel immediately ill like that have to be so high that she would just have been like a, like she would have already been like a withered corpse. Yes, it would. And yeah. on top of that, um, you know, we would be able to know, I mean, <laughs> Livermore came in and did an autopsy on her. I'm sure they tested for radiation. You know, that's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, true. And didn't find any, you know. I, I think they were hoping for it, right? They're like the radiated woman, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, this will be neat, you know. Uh, but yeah, you know, there would have been other signs for us to have known. And then the people that were affected, if she was that radiated that she was affecting those people, they would have died shortly after. Yeah, that's true. You know, so that didn't happen. Um, but it's fun to think about. I think radiation's fun, right? It reminds you of like comic books. You know, it's, it's, except it's, for like in real life, it doesn't give you superpowers. It just gives you cancer. Yes. <laughs> Extreme cancer and death. Um, yeah, that's unfortunately, you know, but I get it. You know, people like the sexy side of radiation, you know, it <laughs> become mutated and you get superpowers. I, I want to, I, okay. I'm going to see if I can find this for next year, 2025. I want the, the sexy side of radiation calendar. <laughs> and it's going to be like all mutants in bikinis and and similar. Oh my gosh. It's like this fucking, it, it, no, it's just a calendar of those horrifying tumors. You know what I'm talking about? like teeth and hair. Oh God. But in bikinis? Yeah. But in bikinis, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Ooh, getting hot in here. Watch out. <laughs> Real sexy. <laughs> That's horrible. And now I don't want it anymore. It was cool when it was mutants. So I was thinking of like, well, cause like, okay, you've seen total recall. Yeah. Oh yeah. True. Yeah, there's like the mutant lady with the yeah. three boobs. Yeah. Everybody wants three boobs. You know? uh, well, I want a poster of, of her, I guess maybe. I don't know. My wife doesn't listen to this show. It's fine. I can say whatever I want. She's going to be like, when did we get that total recall poster? <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, you just be like listen it's sexy radiation time it's yeah it's, it's a whole weird. thing emily you wouldn't get it just it's it's fine <laughs> um you know but again like i said out of all the theories that didn't happen i like this one the best uh <laughs> as as weird as that is and uh you know, and, and then, of course, other people say that um, arsenic, maybe this was a suicide attempt. Um, maybe hmm. she had taken a bunch of arsenic, which would have, with the same kind of circumstances, converted eventually to arsenic gas, right? And that's what affected everybody. But arsenic gas is so fucking dangerous. Right. Like, again, the reason why this didn't happen, is it, you know, it's an interesting one. Oh, okay, she overdosed on arsenic. That makes sense. Except nobody else died, just her. Um, these people probably would have died, 
you know, if that were the case and they didn't. Sure. And what's the, uh, like, what's the half-life on, on something like, cause I, I, I legitimately don't know the, the answer to this. Like what's the half-life on something like arsenic? Cause we know it's really short on uh, like a uh, uh, dimethyl sulfate and we know that it's, it's, it's short on, uh, well, it's short on all the dimethyl everything that was probably in, involved here. Um, and yet they, they, they still found it. And so, because it was in such quantities. Um, and so, I mean, for something like arsenic, if, if that was a, a, a legit explanation, they, they would have had to have found some, right? Well, here's what I'm going to say. Listen, for this episode this week, okay, I Googled the death penalty and lethal injection. I Googled <laughs> D- DMSO <laughs> and dimethyl sulfate. Uh, right. radiation um and potential uh drug conspiracies i'm not i was not about to google arsenic gas uh <laughs> you're just like i'm so tired you guys there's been so much death uh well no i'm just concerned now that i'm on a watch list so <laughs> <laughs> we're already on watch list like it's fair enough it's fine just make your peace with it <laughs> you know i guess at least i have this whole episode as proof this is what i was doing i swear um <laughs> But no, that uh, but that's also a good point. You know, again, there was a hazmat team that came in and scoped the area, right? And they didn't find anything. Um, could they have just again dropped the ball and been bad at their job? Yeah, sure. But at the end of the day, you know, we can't just make up evidence because there's a lack of evidence. <laughs> oh, we can, and that's how I know it was mutant aliens. <laughs> Fair enough. That's a good point, though. Book coming in 2025. Oh, (laughs) jeez. So then the last theory that I want to talk about that people are so fucking sold on. Okay, listen, when you Google this and you go to various forums and you read people's opinions about Gloria Ramirez and what they think happened to her and you listen to shows about it, people are fucking throwing this theory out there like it is truth. Okay. People say that this particular hospital was in cahoots with a big drug ring and they were making meth. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So they're, they're making meth, right? And the hospital is housing the meth precursors at the hospital and they're hiding them in IV bags. And one of those IV bags, which carried one of the meth precursors, they accidentally grabbed instead of a bag of saline for for her. Oh boy. Right. And them just a classic away. mix them up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It happens all the time. You grab oh, yeah. meth instead of happened sleep. to me earlier today. <laughs> I thought I was getting the milk out of the fridge. I grabbed the meth instead and I'm still high. <laughs> just it's a pretty good day. It sounds like um, <laughs> <laughs> I almost yeah. knocked my microphone over. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> so that's what they say happened. There was a big mix up. You know, they grabbed the meth bag instead. They were pumping her full of meth and either the, again, the defibrillation or them drawing the blood. Something happened to release meth gas in the air and got everybody high as fuck. Oh, okay. And so, okay. So were they <laughs> so high on meth that they, like, there was, like, it caused the mass hysteria? Um, or, or, or are they trying to say that like meth makes you short of breath and, and like nauseated? Yes. Yeah, I guess so. The second one, I think is what they're okay. saying is that they're high on meth. You know, when you get high on accident, I know it happens all the time, but you know, I, okay. Full stop. In all fairness, there are people that are drugged, right? It does happen. You're, you get high sure. against your will. Um, it is a very scary situation. Um, definitely somebody that, that, you know, was, being drugged without their knowledge because the nurses don't know this they just think it's saline right so they're going into it and all of a sudden now they're meth heads and uh you know it could it could produce potentially you know issues of like breathing and i guess fainting if you're if you take too much i don't know i've never done meth you know yeah I, i there's that i try to be cool and i want people to think i'm cool but i have also never done meth yeah, right. I, you know, I've, I've smoked plenty of meth cigarettes in my day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what people, you know, of course, again, you know, people are saying, well, again, it's a conspiracy, right? The hospital is a part of this big drug ring somehow. Not necessarily the, ho- the hospital as a whole, but maybe just individuals within the hospital. Now, what I did find out 
I, I did learn a lot about meth. So that's another one for the books that I fucking Google this week is meth labs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is that, you know, the, the precursors to making meth, um, the chemicals that go into it, the chemical compounds, they do cause a lot of issues. And that's why meth labs are so fucking dangerous to have in the middle of your neighborhood. So it's true. And, and uh, they're very volatile, I think too. Uh, like, yeah, should nice people, right? Uh, yes. Well, like yeah. the chemicals can like explode. Is yeah, my point. Can, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, they're saying that this definitely could be a type. Of, you know, maybe the meth was mixed again. She also was given other drugs. Um, whatever. It wasn't actually meth itself that was made and premixed in the IV. It was like again a precursor to meth, something that they used to make it. And so they're saying that that could mix in with whatever, you know, the opiates or whatever she was on, you know, that could have caused this to happen. Does um, that also create dimethyl sulfone? It could. That's what some people are saying. It, it, very, huh. it very well could. Um, okay. So that's why she had an overdose of it is because, you know, in her system, she had that much because uh, they were pumping her full of saline. They so thought. So not only. OK, so then the hospital is responsible for her death. And the uh, the the so called like toxic uh, uh, gas or whatever that that they sh- that that they said she was emitting. Right. That's an interesting theory. I mean, is there any evidence for that? Uh, I mean, not really. It seems like it was pushed really hard on a specific podcast, and like that's what they believe in. Not this one, obviously, but that's what they believe in. And right. um, that's where majority of the rumor had spread and kind of caught on like wildfire. But like I said, there's a lot of people that say that yes. Now, there's a lot of people that came forward and said, well, in the 90s in Riverside, California, meth wasn't really a thing. Um, which is something to note, uh, you know, of significance. They said that, you know, it really wasn't um, something that they would have, you know, it would have been more sense for them to just be, you know, straight up selling heroin or anything else, you know, because that's what was popular at the time. That's what people were doing in the 90s. But everybody was doing crack in the 90s. Um, and I know that. Everybody. Yeah. It's, no, it's true. <laughs> um, everybody, you know, that was the drug of choice at the time was, was, was crack. Um, okay. Just statistically speaking, that it was easy to get and it was cheap and everybody was doing it. Uh, meth was kind of new. It's kind of a new thing. Um, but it was around, you know, so it's not like it was completely unheard of. Um, but there's no, I mean, like I said, there's no, no evidence at all. Um, of course, drug dealers aren't going to come forward that are a part of this big ring and go, yeah, we know. We sold it to that guy at the hospital, you know. And then he he was kind of it was kind of like a drug mule thing, right? They were using the hospital as a cover to transport these things to somewhere else. Sure. And make math. So which I mean, if you were going to be transporting drugs, I mean, I guess dis- like disguising them as pharmaceuticals and uh, and moving them through like the same logistical system that a hospital would use would be a great way to disguise it. Honestly, it, it, like that's some absolutely. shit. Like that's straight out of Breaking Bad or something, right? Well, and like so, like saline. So IVs aren't f- pre-filled at the hospital, right? They they show up filled. Right. Um. So you get a truckload of saline solution in your IV bags or whatever, um, that come in, or or your truckload of whatever. I mean, that's why, like, if you go to the hospital and they give you something besides saline, usually a saline, they're gonna give you a whole bag. But anything else, any other medication, it's from like a half full bag. It's because it's been used on somebody else, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. because that's how they transport these things. They don't. They're not made in house, right? It's not a. It's not a five star restaurant, you know. It's I demand a. <laughs> Uh, organic <laughs> handmade boutique IV like IV bag if I'm staying at the hospital. <laughs> I want to see them make it. Right in front of you. Yes. Table, table or uh you know uh bedside service, you know. <laughs> right. Farm to table IV bags. Uh, they flambe it, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. I've at this point I've been dead for like 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, sir. <laughs> Your IV bag's ready. <laughs> right. And you just hear, eh. I had it coming. It's fine. <laughs> you know, so anyway, so one one theory that they pose is that maybe it wasn't a middleman at the hospital. Maybe it was just a mix up. Maybe instead of delivering saline, they delivered something else that they shouldn't have, um, which would have been one of those meth precursor things. And, you know, that's that guy is the one transporting the, the delivery truck driver. I mean, it goes so deep. Mm. 
um, with the lore, but there is no physical evidence for this at all. No, right. it's, there's just not proof that this ever happened. So um, unless something were to come out about it, uh, it seems like that would be a really stupid move for somebody that works at a hospital to try to run a drug ring there. Now, people have done stupider things, that's for sure. Um, but it, it would be really dumb that you could get into so much trouble, especially if the drugs that you are uh, pushing kill somebody. <laughs> Which is likely yeah, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you think that like if you were going to hide your drugs in something, you'd want to hide it as something that like nobody would ever use in a way that would let them know it was drugs. Right. You're not going to If you put it it. in an IV bag, you got to expect at some point, somebody's going to accidentally fucking use it. Right. I mean, yeah, you don't hide your drugs with other drugs. You know what I mean? That's like, it's just dumb. Like if you're planning on poisoning somebody, right. And you have everybody for for cocktails and you pre-make the poison cocktail, put it in the same colored glass as everybody else's and (laughs) stick it in the fridge. You know, I mean, <laughs> seriously, no, I mean, you're, you're not wrong. That's, that's a good analogy. That's fucking stupid. You know, that's not how you would do that. You'd just be like, well, not tonight, I guess, you know, you throw them all out, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, you, you just don't do that. You don't hide your drugs with drugs. <laughs> it's a bad idea. Um, aside from that, there are people that say that saline looks significantly different than any of the meth precursors that they could have been using. So not clear, you know, it's not obvious right. that, you know, it, it could be a mix up. So, um, did you come across any interesting theories that you wanted to share? I mean, that's really the most interesting ones I found. No, I think you pretty much nailed it, uh, in terms of, uh, of, of potential like hypotheses to explain this. I can make some shit up though, since that's basically all it takes to, to have one of these dumb internet theories. Well, yeah, make one. Let's see if it takes off. Okay, so um, let's see. I'm going to say I think that the hospital is actually run by the reptilian Illuminati. Okay. And what they had done was uh, they had actually transported uh, one of their own people from the future back in time, but they hadn't accounted for what that does to their physiology, which naturally creates this, uh, this dimethyl sulfone. And so what she really was, was a reptilian from the future. A reptilian time traveler. Yes. Yeah. And so like the, and, and this is a classic reptilian bureaucratic fuck up, right? Like they didn't fill out the proper forms. And so they, you know, she was supposed to get an operation before she left so instead, she comes back. She doesn't have the operation. Next thing you know, her blood's turning into poisonous gas, and uh, and they just gotta cover it up quick. They're just like, "Fuck it, we gotta remove her heart," because then they would know that she has a reptile heart. Yeah, she'd have like a six chambered super heart because she's a reptilian. You can't <laughs> let people see that. Yeah, you know that checks. My uncle was saying something about that one time, uh, so that makes sense. <laughs> see, you heard it here first. Hundred percent true. And he knows. He's a blue-collar man, you know? He knows all the secrets. Uh. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Now, as a reptilian, I have to say, I think I know a little bit uh, about uh, how our blood turns into toxic gas if we don't get an operation before we travel back in time. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. So, pretty racist to think I don't know that. (laughs) So racist. (laughs) Wouldn't that be speciesist? Isn't that Sure. Yeah. Whatever makes me win the argument. That's what it is. Fair enough. Fair enough. That checks. I mean, that holds just as much water as uh, anything else, I think. You know, it's not. Well, I mean, sec- other than the actual scientific answer that we know is probably correct. Yeah. Yes, it's not as sexy as radiation still. Uh, but, <laughs> and, and I agree that the actual explanation, um, it explains it pretty good. Uh, <laughs> you know? It does. It does a pretty, it, it does a great job. You know, even though I can admit, because I'm a person that can admit things uh, that I can understand, again, the, the shred of doubt. I get it. Yes. I get it. Um, but I think that that's more, I agree, a matter for the family, you know, having the closure um, than it is for myself or anybody else on the Internet to take it and run with it and spin it into something it's not. <laughs> you know. Oh, totally. And, you know, it, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with you because... Again, the way this was investigated very early on, um, 
and the the evidence destroyed or lost, it um, it does make it impossible to prove with 100% certainty. And in fact, <clears throat> that is the consensus, even among the, the uh, uh, dimethyl sulfate hypothesis supporters, is that um, there, there are some holes because you couldn't possibly have all the evidence you need to prove it 100% because of the early fuck-ups you know, in the investigation. So at the end of the day, uh, yeah, I have to land on um, ultimately uh, unsolved, but most likely the, uh, the, the dimethyl sulfate explanation is is correct like that's definitely the likeliest explanation that we have and she may have very well overdosed herself with this this chemical and that could have contributed to her kidney failure or yeah it could have been the cancer that contributed to the kidney failure it it didn't really i don't think it really mattered um so much at that point uh you know we don't know had they been able to kind of catch that part of it while she was still alive would it have saved her life um Maybe, maybe could have bought her a little bit more time. You know? Yeah, I, well, I had uh, I, I had read too that um, her kidneys failing uh, was likely why or how the uh, the the dimethyl sulfone actually built up to the degree that it did. Yes, uh, because her you know her body wasn't properly filtering this 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 stuff, and that's um, that's probably why uh, you know it had built up to the point that allowed this combination of events to occur that produce the dimethyl sulfate. So, yeah. and that is, you know, people like hear like, Oh, the fruity garlic smell that is actually uh, quite common and multiple, multiple problems. Um, that was a symptom that I had as a type one diabetic. And it's because I had built up sugar in my blood that could not leave, oh, you, well. know, you know, um, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that because uh, fruity garlic that was actually my nickname in high school. <laughs> nice, that's better than Joe Newspaper. I'll tell you, that's... <laughs> yeah, you had a cool nickname in high school. Yeah, um, all right. You know, you could be called fruity garlic for anything. I mean, <laughs> you'd use it as an insult and as a term of endearment. Um, True. You know, it works both ways. You know, but but this is a common medical. Uh, symptom of a lot of things many things um it's just basically exactly that for whatever reason your body is not able to process whatever waste naturally whatever that waste is and it builds up and creates this weird fruity garlic taste smell something or the other um it just happens you know it's not really that unusual i don't know why people think it's that unusual. It's not. Um, I think they also said that that the, the kidney failure contributed to the ammonia smells as well um, that were coming from like the blood vial and things like that. That um, would make some sense, I think. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, if she has um, a bladder that's not expelling correctly, yes, it does. <laughs> you know, <it's>, right. <laughs> checks out. You know, so I don't know. You know, again, people claim this is unsolved. I, I, I get it, but it's not really. Um, you know, the definitive explanation that has been scientifically peer reviewed and has now been studied by two different organizations with experts that um, actually are, you know, doctors and chemists and <laughs> things like that. Um, they all agree uh, of what caused this, and it just is happens to be a fucking freak accident really like a, a a special set of circumstances that caused this to happen um this does happen in other cases and i'm not gonna you know go into detail about the other cases but you know there are instances where like i read of, of one case where a guy i know i said i wasn't gonna do this but i'm not gonna give you the details <laughs> a guy went to the er he had gotten sprayed with a bunch of pesticide and he was making everybody sick well because he was fucking covered in pesticide you know um it's not that abnormal like that's kind of what the er is there for <laughs> you know, stuff like this uh, true you know so something to keep in mind um stay away from the er unless you absolutely have an emergency go to urgent care instead if you can uh of course you know finances pending um <laughs> but it's, yeah i don't know any final thoughts on gloria ramirez and her uh mystery not so mystery illness yeah, well, I, I I think that we've uh, we've pretty much covered everything there is is to cover more more or less. Um, obviously, there's a lot 
of uh, of deep diving into the minutia of the uh, the um, the actual submitted paper and everything. You can get into the actual methodology of of how they came to that conclusion. But um, but basically, yeah, I, I I think we've landed on the most correct answer that is available, and of course that is that this bizarre set of circumstances came together in such a way that it produced this, this gas that, uh, that made some people sick and it's, it's led to this mystery. And, you know, it always kind of bothers me that people can't just marvel at the bizarre circumstances that, that arose for something like, like this to happen. I mean, right. Cause it's, it's, it is marvelous. Even if you know how it happened, can't we just appreciate it for being like so completely fucking weird and random that all of this shit aligned in such a way for for this this poor woman to be briefly toxic like is isn't that interesting enough does it have to be fucking aliens or secret meth labs or reptilian illuminati or whatever fucking bullshit we we feel like we need to make up to make things more interesting because this is fucking interesting enough. It doesn't need any more bells and whistles like this kind of anomaly and the explanation for it should be the blueprint behind what we do. You know, you see something weird, you have this weird case and uh, and you, you do your due diligence and hopefully, eventually, that leads to a satisfying explanation based on actual evidence, which is what we got in this case. This should be what we want. We should be happy with this, you know, yeah. like not the outcome necessarily because this poor woman died, but with the the results of the investigation, like this should be what we fucking want. Yeah. There's no reason to embellish the story. It's I agree. It's already interesting enough. It's like uh the Patterson Gimlin film. And then fucking MK Davis comes along and goes, Well, but did you know there was a whole massacre behind it? Like, what the fuck, dude? It's Bigfoot on camera. Like it's already cool enough. You don't have to <laughs> fucking make it something it's not. True. <laughs> you know? Um I agree. You know, sometimes a story is just a really neat story. And it was actually really fun to, like I said, I'll go on, I'll read multiple articles about these things. I'll, I'll go and, and look up different forums and see just what regular people say about this stuff. Um, going on like the medical side of this story, not the conspiratorial side and like seeing what people think about it from there was really interesting because they do just find it as like, you know, a type of medical Marvel um, a learning opportunity you know what to do when this happens in the future it inevitably yeah. will happen again you know at some point um <laughs> and if, if we live long enough i guess to get there but you know to kind of use it as a tool and like i said and what to do if you are faced with something like this again especially er people man they they see a lot of shit um, oh yeah a lot of shit and so you know to see them all kind of get giddy about this and be happy with this very basic explanation you know to maybe some other people's eyes um you know they think that that's interesting and i agree with them i think it's interesting too which is why i wanted to talk about it on the show um because it it is neat and it kind of it walks the line on fringe with its reputation um but you know i think that there is a obviously there is a very ob you know good explanation for it i'm happy with with the way it turned out I, sad that she died i mean my god i right. guess i have to clarify that but um you know happy with the uh, investigation overall um and hopefully they did learn to do better and i think that hospital actually now is completely gone so there's that too uh, <laughs> surprise surprise <laughs> you know they completely tore it down and started over i think they just rebuilt it somewhere else but yeah it's not there anymore so um don't go to the fucking riverside hospital in california and bother those people <laughs> please yeah right <laughs> they're busy enough um but yeah i think you know this is uh um i think it's a good place to end it so but that being said guys we'll see you back here next wednesday